Hi guys, um, this is Mr. Urego, and uh, today uh, I'll give you an example. Of, we'll solve an example of how to graph a rational function. Okay, rational function, why? Because we have a fraction, a numerator divided by a denominator. We have two polynomials. Uh, to graph a rational function, we have a couple of steps. Okay, um, I'm going to give you the whole list, and then we concentrate on the ones that we need right now. Uh, first step, make sure that the numerator and denominator of the function are arranged in the same order of power, basically organize. Organize the two polynomials in standard form. Two, find the domain, back to the denominator of the function completely, find the real zeros of the denominator by setting the factors equal to zero and solving. So this is how you find the domain. Third step is factor, numerator and denominator completely. And then we gotta cancel any common factors that are in between the two of them. After you have canceled the factors, you are left with that reduced function. And that function is the one that we're going to be using throughout the rest of the problem. Now, instead number three says that we need to factor. Factor and then reduce. If by any chance when we factor, uh, we have, we, we cancel or we reduce any factors, then we go to step number four, which means that my function is going to have a hold on it. Okay? So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go back to the problem and we're going to go step by step. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to exceed the domain for now because I haven't reached that with my, my students. So hopefully we do that next, I guess, tomorrow. So we're going to go straight to a uh, factor. Factor and then we're going to find out about the, um, the holes on my graph. So I'm a function right now. Uh, the way I'm going to factor this out is that's going to be a trinomial, part of the sum. The top is going to factor as x plus 3 times x plus 1. Okay? And the bottom is going to factor as x plus, I'm sorry, x plus 3 times x minus 1. Okay? So that's the way I factor those two trinomials. As we can see, there's a factor that is going to cancel out. It's going to reduce. It's going to be reduced. So uh, I'm going to cancel these x plus 3 in the top, x plus 3 on the bottom. So my new reduced function, and this is step number one, by the way. My new function is going to be f of x equals x plus 1 over x minus 1. Okay? That's what's going to be my new function. As we notice, we cancel x plus 3. So that's what they're saying here about any holes. If we cancel, we will reduce any of the factors, then that factor turns into a hole. So let's go to step. I'm sorry about that. Let's do uh, the next step. will be find the holes of my graph. Okay. As we see, x plus 3 was the factor that was canceled. Therefore, that's going to be the whole on my function. So what I'm going to do with that is that I'm going to make that equal to 0. So I'm going to make that equal to 0. Let's erase the parentheses. And we're going to find the value of x. So make it equal to 0. Therefore, the value of x is going to be x equals negative 3. Now, the holes of my graphs are written as an order pair. It's a point on my graph. And right now I have the x value, but I need an order pair, so I'm missing the y value. So what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna take that negative three, and I'm gonna go back and plug it into my reduced function. Remember, that new function is the one that I'm gonna be using from now on. So if you plug in that negative three, that's gonna give you I just need to replace that, so it's going to be equal to, let's replace the x by negative 3, and on the top I'm going to have 3x plus 1, and then the bottom is going to be negative 3 minus 1, which is going to give you negative 2 over negative 4, which is going to give you 1 half. So the whole of this function is going to be located at negative 3, 1 half. Um, the best thing to do when we graph it, is to take all this information and work it out and put it in my graph at the same time that I'm solving it, okay? So uh, I'm going to do a couple of steps and then we go to the graph. So 
let's go back to our list. So we have our hold and we have our reduced function. So we here in step number four, basically. After that, uh, what's going to happen is we're going to go and find my any vertical asymptotes and the horizontal asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes, the way we find them in vertical asymptotes is uh, setting each factor from the denominator of my reduced function equal to zero and solve. Because uh, it's a vertical asymptote, the vertical asymptote is going to be a vertical line, a vertical line that is going to be just as a dotted line. Okay, dotted line. Uh, let's go back to our graph. So let's do the vertical asymptote. Uh, for my vertical asymptote, we said that my denominator is going to be equal to zero, my new denominator. So right now, my denominator here is x plus 1. I'm sorry, x minus 1. So that's the one that I'm going to be making equal to zero. So to find the vertical asymptote, I'm going to take the um, denominator and I'm going to make it equal to zero. So my denominator right now is x minus 1, and I'll make it equal to 0. From there, I find that x equals 1. Okay? And now, the vertical asymptote is a line. It's a vertical line. Okay? So this is going to be my vertical asymptote. Now, to find my... Uh, the next step is to find my horizontal asymptote. So this is the vertical asymptote, which is a vertical line. To find the horizontal asymptote, which is my next step, what's going to happen is the following. Uh, there's three three um, rules, I guess, to decide uh, what's going to happen with my asymptote. So here's an example of a regular function. Function equals A and B are going to be <clears throat> your linear coefficients for the polynomial on the top and for the polynomial on the bottom. The degree on the top of the numerator is n. The letter n is the degree of the numerator. The letter m is the degree of the denominator. Again, the degree is the highest exponent on the polynomial on the top, and m will be the highest exponent on the polynomial on the bottom. So that's what we compare when we're doing the horizontal asymptote. The first one over here says n less than m, meaning the degree or the exponent on the numerator will be less than the denominator. If that happens, then your horizontal asymptote will always be y equals 0. Okay? If the numerator on the top is less than the denominator, I'm sorry, the, I'm sorry, the degree on the numerator, the degree of the numerator will be less than the degree of the denominator. If the exponents are the same, then your Horizontal asymptote will be the, the coefficients of both polynomials, the one on the top divided by what the one on the bottom. Okay? If the exponent from the top is greater than from the exponent from the bottom, then there's no horizontal asymptote. So those are the three rules um, to find the horizontal asymptote. In our case, if we go back to regular function, we see that um, the polynomial right now is a reduced function, which is x plus 1 over x minus 1. My exponents, right now, we have a 1 here, and we have a 1 on the bottom. So our exponents are the same. n equals m are the same. Therefore, the leading coefficients are the ones that are going to be your horizontal asymptote. If there's no number here, you have a 1. If there's no number here, you have a 1. So my horizontal asymptote is going to be 1 over 1. So let's write that down. Horizontal asymptote, because the exponents are the same, then are going to be horizontal asymptote, which is given by y equals 1 over 1, which is 1. Again, this is a line. This is a horizontal line that will be dotted uh, on, your, on your graph. So we have enough information to go into our graph. Let's go to our graph, and then let's process all this information. And we got to our graph. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the hole in there, which is a negative 3, 1 half. So negative 1, negative 2, 3, and 1 half. So right there, I'm going to make a circle. It should be open, not, not all closed like that. So um, most likely I'm going to do... 
So I zoom in into the graph a little bit to make it bigger, and now that's my hole right now. I cannot make it bigger, but I need to, for you to understand that that's going to be like a circle. Okay, there's going to be uh, this continuous point at that at three one half. So it was the hole. The second thing that we had was the um, vertical asymptote, which was x equals one. Vertical asymptote that's going to be a vertical line that goes through x equals one. So what's going to happen is. I'm going to draw a vertical line and we should do it like this. There you go. So a vertical line that is going to go through x equals 1. Okay, straight line, not like me that I'm doing like a crooked line, but that should be my vertical asymptote. After that, we find that there are horizontal asymptote was y equals 1. So y equals 1, a horizontal line that it goes through 1. Um, so there you go. We go. And here we go through one. And let me erase that and let's get to the dotted. Let's do dotted. Uh, let's do purple again. So the line is going to be through one. And I got to do that again, I guess. Because it should be a straight line. I'm sorry about that. Let's do this. So we have our horizontal asymptote. Okay, so this one is going to be my vertical asymptote, vertical asymptote, and this will be my horizontal asymptote. Okay. Uh, my next step will be uh, we have our asymptotes. Uh, in our case, we don't have a slant asymptote, so we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to go straight to the x intercept and the y intercept. So to find the x intercept, what I'm going to do is to find an x-intercept, what I want to do is I want to make the my numerator equal to zero. Numerator equal to zero and solve. To find the x-intercept is a point that's going to be located in the x-axis. Therefore, I'm going to have a value comma zero because it's an intercept. To find the y-intercept, what's going to happen is I'm going to substitute zero everywhere x appears. So in your function, you're going to make x equals 0 everywhere, and whatever value you have, that's going to be your y-intercept, which is going to be located in your y-axis. So x-intercept, y-intercept. So let's get to the x and uh, y-intercept. Here we go. So, so I've just wrote down the function f of x equals x plus 1 over x minus 1. And now for our x-intercept, we said that uh, we're going to make the numerator 0. So my numerator will be x plus 1, and I'm going to make it equal 0. From there, the x value, and let me add that yellow. Let's do that with purple again. My x value is going to be equal to negative 1. So that's your x-intercept. Okay, therefore, you're going to have negative 1, comma, 0, and you're going to plot that on your graph. Now, uh, that's what my x-intercept I'll put in a minute. For the y-intercept, you got to make x0 on your function. So basically, if your function was x plus 1 over x minus 1, whatever you see in x, I'm going to put a 0. 0 minus 1. From there, you see that you have 1 over negative 1, which is going to give you negative 1. So your y-intercept is going to be 0x, negative 1y, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to bring those two to our graph. So my x-intercept was negative 1. So x-intercept negative 1, negative 1, and C, the purple over here, negative 1. Okay, and then my y-intercept was negative 1, so on the y-axis, I go negative 1. Okay, now, we're pretty much almost done. You see the last last step that we have here is find test points. Make a t-shirt with a few more points to the right and left of each vertical asymptote. Okay, so that's basically all our steps. Um, the most important ones to find the x-intercept, the y-intercept, the holes, uh, the horizontal asymptote, the vertical asymptote. Okay, at this point, basically, we need to check it, what kind of points we have to see if we're able to graph something.
Okay. If we notice, they say um, that we need to make a T chart, which is an NX, X, and, and Y a table of values. Okay. We need more points, basically, because so far I only have three points on the left side. Okay. I have these points on this side, nothing else. So with those points, I can tell what kind of graph I'm going to have. Remember, my horizontal asymptote, my horizontal asymptote, which is this, the horizontal asymptote, is a line that my graph will approach but will never touch. Okay? So basically, I can see, <clears throat> I'm going to do it red. I can see that I can draw a line. Oh, that's kind of really off, but uh, uh, it's going to be tough over here. So uh, I need to draw a line that it goes through those points. that it will follow the motion or the direction of the asymptote okay so that's going to be something like that on the left side again we're going to have that hole over here so you got to make sure that you jump on that hole and you don't graph through so if you notice right now we have my graph to the left side of my vertical asymptote i have it on the left side but I, there's nothing on your right side so I need to graph on the right side as well. So because I need to graph that, I need to make a table of values for the right side. So if my vertical asymptote is a one, this is a one. So I'm going to use two, three, four, five, any values to the right, because that's what I'm missing. So in my case, in my case, I'm going to use, I guess, let's use two let's use three and let's use four we don't need too many points we need two three points at least so we have an idea what kind of curve are we going to be able to get so i'm going to bring the um, reduce function and plug it in there so if i replace the two if i replace the two into the x i'm going to have two plus one is three and two minus one is one so i'm going to have three over one which is three if I replace by 3, then it's going to be 3 plus 1 is going to be 4 on the top, and 3 minus 1 is going to be 2 on the bottom. So 4 divided by 2 is going to give you 2. If I replace 4, then on the top I'm going to have 5, and on the bottom is going to be 4 minus 1, which is going to be 3. So 5 divided by 3 is going to be 167. So I found three points. Let's plot those three points and see what kind of graph I'm going to be getting. So 2, 3. 2, 3. Excellent. Uh, 3, 2. 3, 2. And we see how close it gets to the asymptotes. It gets 4, 167. So uh, 1, comma, a little below. And I guess I did it too, too below. Okay, so a little below the two value. Okay, so as you can see, I'm gonna have a same shape, and at least I know where my graph is gonna be located. I know that it's not gonna be here on the quadrant on the bottom, it's going to be on the top side. So from there, I just need to connect those points and kind of uh, do the same curve that I did on the bottom left. So I know that it's gonna be something like that. Through the asymptote, it touches the point, and it gets really close to the asymptote, okay? And that will be the curve. Uh, that will be the, the graph of the rational function. Again, very important, the hole. Very important to see if it's, it has a hole or not. <clears throat> your x-intercept, your y-intercept, your vertical asymptote, your horizontal asymptote. Those are the key features of this graph and after that it's just a table of values okay all right guys thank you for watching uh take care bye bye